generally speaking, people come across and, and, and oh, how do you fertilize the plant? How do you do it? No, I mean, you, you grow the soil. That's what it's all about. I've learned as much from Bob Kennard as anyone else on this, uh, on this odyssey uh, that I've been on. Uh, Bob is easily one of the most comprehensive gardeners, farmers on the planet. Uh, listen to him explain nutrient cycling in a, in a really clear fashion. And uh, visit greenstringfarm.com. That's one of his projects up in Sonoma. And uh, come back and see some more when you get a chance. Thanks. Here we live on planet Earth, and it's, it, it's a contained vessel floating around in space and here in the, our little cosmic quarters, and, and it's, nothing's coming and nothing's going. We've got energy coming in from sunlight, and so we've got that coming in. And, and, but, I mean, if a, it's a rock or a piece of soil or life, one of our expended bodies, it's, it it stays here. Oftentimes you'll you'll get oh uh, what do you you can't don't use meat and compost systems well what's going to happen with that meat product waste stream if it if it doesn't get you, composted and digested and renewed it's that's what's going to happen to it whether it's done in a pure fashion or whether it's done in a, a rude crude fermented landfill fashion under natural systems you have the you have the creeks up in the mountains the rivers starting in the creeks up in the mountains and and, and the rocks are really big up there in the mountains and, and they t tumble into the creeks and bound along and by the time they get to the ocean beach everything has been solubilized except the silica or the sand element. And, and before our culture came along and turned the creeks and rivers into ditches, the land used to flood. That's where we had the flood plain. And so the, the land got all of these ground up rocks from the mountain the mineral tea of the mountain to recharge the, the soil surface every, every flood season, whatever environment it might be in. And everything except the silica. Silica is the hardest element, that's why it stay, has intact, that's why we have s s high silica sand on the beaches. And, it, and not only the rocks go into that, into that mountain tea, but all of the biology of the mountain, you've got, you've got the deer poop and the dead deer and, and all of the little bits of soil eroding off natural process all goes into the creek and you have true mountain tea, mineral rich, biological rich tea and the river floods out and every, in this climate, every spring flood season, boom, there you go, a new application of, of compost tea charged with the mineral nutrient load of the watershed of that particular, of that particular drainage and really important. And if we go out into the garden and we were going to Basically, we've dug and denied nature the opportunity to do that work by not embracing flooding of the floodplain, and we build our cities there and all that kind of stuff and, and reject that blessing of mountain tea. And so we need to actually do the work ourselves, unless we're going to change our habits, and that's unlikely. So we've got to get one of those brewers, and, and that's an aerobic brewer, and it mimics the, the, the river. And we go up into the mountains and we select indigenous, predominantly indigenous bacteria resources, go up into those mountains and, and select small handfuls, oh, a quarter of a cup is plenty, of, of inoculum starter. And, and get a little bit of compost from under all of the different environments, from the boggy, swampy, and under the madrone, and the manzanita, all, every place that feels good, that smells good, that, that's soft, that, and sweep the existing leaf load away a little bit and, and get, that, get that rich full spectrum compost. And it has all of the funguses and bacteria and viruses and absolutely everything, whether humanity knows anything about it or not, in that bit of soil. And bring that down and that goes into that brewer, which is a, just like the creek or the river. It's active and roiling and, and, and churning. And, and stimulating a high level of aerobic conditions. And, and the creek, of course, does it better than we can do it, but it's, it's still the same process. And, and um, if we take and introduce appropriate raw mineral nutrients into that vessel that's the aerobic brewer, and, and we introduce the composts from, from natural resources and, and, um, and, and local natural resources, from my perspective, the best, and we, and we feed that, we, those bacteria need 
need foodstuffs naturally occurring foodstuffs that would be dried leaves and, and droppings from animals and, and dead bodies of animals, all that stuff goes into the creek. And the creek water is pure, even though it has dead animals in it, after a course of a run, it's so aerobic, the bacteria digest that and there's, it's turned into bacteria bodies and they're aerobic bacteria bodies. And you can drink water from a pure mountain stream and it's pure, even though it has lots of stuff in it, has lots of life in it. Has lots of raw dissolved and solubilized and um, inert as well minerals in it, the silica mostly moving on the floor of the floor of the creek, and and um, that's what we're looking towards doing in a, in, in building a soil is not doing anything unique, not doing anything human technology, nothing new. It's mimicking, duplicating nature, and and taking that 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 process and bringing it to the lands that aren't blessed with flooding naturally or aren't blessed with flooding because of human activities of, of drainage. And um, pretty, pretty much the sum of it, that we've got these four raw parent food groups and, and the life brings them all together and builds us and the plants and all of the critters. And we've got the sunlight and, and, and the mineral nutrients and all of the compounds that come out of the atmosphere, the plant absorbs carbon from the air and builds the structure of its body with it. But it couldn't do that absorptant pro property, those qualities, unless it had the enzymatically controlled metabolic process that it needs the minerals for. And it brings all of these elements together and it does this and organizes it and holds life together in an organized fashion with cosmic, we'll call it sunlight energy, although it's also reflected moon energy and star energy. We know nothing about it, quite frankly. Now, at least I know nothing about it. Maybe, maybe some physicist out there has some greater idea, can pin it all down, but um, it's still, uh, it's quite a, quite a, a remarkable um, cohesion of, of, of um, you know, the plants can't do it all by themselves, just like we can't do it all by ourselves. We eat, but basically what we're doing is feeding the microfloral population in our digestive tract and all other animals as well, and, and we're really, consumers of de decayed food material and that decayed food material is transformed into into digestive microflora and they live and die very rapidly and we eat their protoplasm that's really the refinement process that that we consume and it's uh, it's it's basic simple repetitive it doesn't matter plants farm farm bacteria just like we farm uh, chickens Plants absorb sunlight energy and, and absorb um, elements from the atmosphere and make sugars. And they use those sugars to fuel their own growth and sweetness and metabolism. But they secrete a large percentage, up to sometimes more than 50% of those total sugars are secreted in, by the root systems to feed the bacterial population that is associated with them. And those bacteria go exchange their alkalis. They, that, or excuse me, they exchange their acids for the alkalis of the raw minerals and rot the rocks. They take those, those a bacteria has a, a little pouch, a vacuole inside of it that, it that it accumulates, it's highly and refines highly acidic wastes and those wastes are disgorged against the raw mineral nutrients and there's a process called acidulation where the acids are exchanged for the alkalis of the rock and, and the rock compounds move into solution that is further refined and the bacteria use it in their metabolism and the plant fed the bacteria, the bacteria did work for the plant, the bacteria ages and dies and the plant gets its protoplasm and runs its job, its life with it. And it's a, it's a very uh, complex interactive system between animal life and, and, and the primary collectors of sunlight energy, green plant material and it goes on. And, and the more life you have within a given system, the more life you can have. 